Okay, I will call the uh, February 16th, uh, 2023 meeting of the Oakbrook Police Commission to order. I invite all in attendance to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So um, I have a amended, made an amendment to the minutes. Um, so I'll entertain a motion on the minutes as amended. I move that they be accepted as amended. Okay. Motion is made by Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, Commissioner Wood will second. All in favor? Aye. I'll go a little ahead of myself. Um, Commissioner O'Brien and I are here today dressed in our commission shirts uh, because promptly after this meeting ends today we'll be going next door to the public safety building for the open house where we'll be joined by the captain, excuse me, by the captain and the lieutenant, um, among others from the fire department. Anyone else would like to attend? Um, but they'll be represent us on both sides of the building there to, to guide people through the building and, and show them everything and answer any questions uh, that they may have about the facility. Um, and with that, if uh, Captain here Libby, we, we uh, do not have uh, Chief Rondo here this uh, this afternoon. He's uh, away on vacation, and Commissioner Coop is uh, out of state handling uh, personal matters, uh, so he is excused from this meeting. Captain, so yes. Uh, <coughs> we'll start with the arrest from year to date. There we go. Um, so in January, we only had 18, which is a decrease from December of 2022. That's where he comes up with us. I had to ask that where he was comparing us to. Um, of a decrease of 37.93%. Um, if you look at last year uh, in January, we had 29 arrests. Wrong slide? Wrong incidents? Mm, uh, one thing I did not check was. That. Usually starts with incidents. Uh, did I switch this around? Mm. Uh, I might have switched it around. That's okay. So arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Back to incidents. Year to date in 2003, uh, we have 62. Um, that's an increase of 29.16% from the month of December. Last year at this time, um, in January, I like to compare it to it, we had 46. So we had a good um, increase with offenses. We had 89 offenses in the month of January. And then the next sheet tells you all the offenses that are with it. Are those inclusive of the SROs? That is. Yeah. That's included with that. So we'll get to the uh, personal analysis and you'll see all that yeah. that's in there. Um, the traffic stop. So what he showed here, I did check this out. This was actually last year's traffic stops. Uh, he must have printed out the 2022. So in 2023, we had 161, which is down from last year and down from the month of December, which we had 190. But the tickets are correct. Um, eight tickets given out, which is 4.9% um, tickets, uh, chance of getting a ticket. So the percentage is a little different. Hmm. And then you'll see all the um, uh, citations on the next pages that you can uh, go down with. Collisions. In January, we are down, which is a good thing, um, only 11, which is pretty um, remarkable, especially with all the snow we had yeah. in January. Um, well, but there were three, three, was it three snow days? Three snow days, yes. And that and then some, kept a lot of student drivers. Yeah, late days too, so yeah. for them. So that's a good thing. Um, so that's a decrease of 31.25% from the month of December. Uh, if you look at last year, we had in the month of January of 22 is 15 in uh, January. And then you can see what streets, um, usual, the usual one, Center Street, South Main Street. We did have um, one up on uh, Pork Hill and Trash Mountain Road, which is um, a little different than usual. Yeah. So. And yeah, those aren't high, high traffic, high speed areas. Yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming somebody with the snow might have yeah. hit, hit, hit. Was it you? So here's your personal analysis report page. Um, so we have 62 incidents. Um, the one that pops out, as you can see, is um, Officer Devine up at the school. 
So she's got 20 incidents this year already. Uh, compared to last year up at the school, she only had 12. So she is on pace to outdo what she did last year right Which now. is not good. Yeah, which was 165 cases. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on, uh, especially as we keep going through the months. And then I'll get into the detective report. I don't know what's on here. Um, so, Detective Emerson, uh, during the month of December, he covered multiple open patrol shifts. So right now we're down one officer. Um, we're in the process of hopefully getting a hire for that. And then we had one in the, in the month of January. We had one in the academy. So we had some open shifts um, within the month of January. So he covered it on overtime shifts. So for the month of January 2023, Detective Emerson was assigned a missing juvenile case, an untimely death in a simple assault case. Uh, he assisted DCYF with a level one priority safety check regarding a child endangerment case, which that is basically a 24 hour approval for referrals to be screened in. Uh, Detective Anderson assisted Corporal Shanks, and this was on his overtime shifts, extra shifts there, with a motor vehicle stop that resulted in an arrest for DWI. He also assisted Corporal Shanks with another motor vehicle stop uh, with an arrest of transportation of drugs in a motor vehicle, methamphetamine, and heroin were seized um, from that vehicle. I think that was later uh, with a search warrant. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Detective Emerson was assigned extortion, sextortion case of an adult male, and that's in his detective role. Detective Emerson, as an agent member of the in Internet Crimes Against Children, ICAC task force, assisted the team with interrogation of a target identified for multiple counts of possession and manufacturing of child exploitation, photographs and videos. Detective Emerson also assisted the ICAC TAC force with the execution of a search warrant on the target's residence, which was in Merrimack County. So it's actually a great uh, task force that he's part of. So when they need our assistance, he goes out there to help them in different counties. And then when we need the assistance, they'll all come to us in our town. So very, very um, similar to um, the SWAT team that we're a part of yeah. and what we're trying to get with the our team and everything. So cases assigned, investigated, uh, one missing juvenile, one untimely death, one simple assault, one child endangerment. He assisted with the, the DWI arrest and transportation of drugs, extortion, sextortion case, possession of manufacturing times four child exploitation photographs and videos. Percentage of case closed this month, 88%, which is great. Um, excellent job. Percentage of new cases closed by arrest during this month is 25%. And the percentage of the entire case load closed is 88%. Oh. Yeah, and you'll see that on the next page. Um, he's got it all laid out. And I'll go into the SRO report. We'll start with SRO Divine. So she broke this up a little different than normally in the past. So she did it through the high school and then what was in the middle school. So I'll break that down um, how she has that. January was the fifth month of school for SRO Divine with 19 days of school after they had three snow days and two hour delays. So there, there's your uh, snow days and uh, delayed. SRO Divine responded to several incidents in the Kingswood High School, middle school and took numerous school bus related complaints. SRO Divine wrote 19 reports, 13 at the high school, five at the middle school, and one at Crescent Lake School. So this is what's under the high school. SRO Divine took a report of students having suicide thoughts. The student was found by SRO Divine to relieve, be released into the custody of the parents or the guardian. SRO Divine took four reports of students with vapes. All had received school discipline. So that's a big change that we did do. Um, couple years ago. Basically, we, we let the school do the discipline on that, unless it becomes multiple times with the individual, then we'll take it. So we take all the products, take that, and go through the process of destroying that. Uh, SRO Divine took a report of studying a uh, student playing with a spent rifle round in the class. Administration was involved and contacted the parent. SRO Divine took a report from a male student stating he was threatened by another student with a knife. The reporter, the reporter had engaged in disorderly behavior to the other student prior. SRO Divine conducted a Terry Patch search of the subject with no weapons found, which is a good thing. Throughout the investigation, it was believed that the subject had stated, stated it to avoid harm 
to himself by the reporter. No charges were filed. So as you can tell, he used that for protection. But there was nothing found on the individual. S. R. O. Divine assisted a subject in obtaining a restraining order and took a report of harassment. S. R. O. Divine took a report of shoplifting at the Pro Deport, which I had no idea what that was at first. Oh, yeah. um, so there's actually a little store in there. Mm -hmm. Odd you see shoplifting at a school. So yeah. kind of, that's what I reached out to her just to find that out. The student had received school discipline and the investigation is still ongoing. S. R. O. Divine spoke to a parent regarding drug use. She investigated a motor vehicle accident on campus, and she took a report of past tense sexual assault that was reported to happen in another jurisdiction. The report was forwarded to the police department that has that jurisdiction. So this is what you guys mentioned a lot. We do get a lot of cases from other jurisdictions, other towns. Um, this is where your school resource officer has yeah. a great connection with these individuals, and they felt comfortable coming to her. So she'll get the first report of it. She'll take the initiative. Um, get the report done and then forward it off to that agency and follow up with them and then they'll take it from there um, Middle school SRO divine assisted a student and a mother regarding a mental health evaluation SRO divine assisted DCYF school administration in locating a family that had moved away and did not enroll the students in another town DCYF took over and helped that family SRO Divine transported a juvenile to the police department regarding threatening staff members, which resulted in school discipline. She investigated an assault, which resulted in school discipline. She also investigated a, dis a disorderly complaint, which resulted in school discipline. And then the Crescent Lake School, she investigated a report of multiple students planning a bomb in a car in the downtown, which resulted in school discipline. That was pretty lengthy little investigation, but the ages will tell you a lot why it was school discipline. So. so was it more just chatter than yeah. actual planning? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. That's a little bit better, but still disconcerting. Yeah. So you'll see her summary, summary report that you can look down on. So um, I don't know if you hit on this if, if we went over it, um, but one of the, and I just want to speak to this because as, as everybody knows, we're looking at, <coughs> excuse me, um, adding another SRO to the school complex. And one of the things that is listed under her activity for January is that she took a uh, report of a past tense sexual assault that happened in another jurisdiction. So that just means it happened in another district town, probably where the student resides. <coughs> Why that is important is in our reporting about the caseload of, of SRO Divine and, and she has an extensive caseload, and she's buried in paperwork. And, and it's stuff like this that, um, you know, we're, we're getting better at reporting to the SAU because a member of the school board spoke to me about this. He said, well, you're, when you report, you've stated that you have incidences that happen off campus but in other, in other jurisdictions. Because she has built such strong relationships with the students, they feel comfortable with her. So they are coming to her and giving her information regarding, it could be a sexual assault, a physical assault, uh, maybe neglect in their home. You know, all these different things are coming to her, which compels her to do a report, preliminary investigation, and then package that all up and send it off to the appropriate agency in that, in that town where the alleged offense took place. That's also very time consuming. That's part of her workload. So yes, there is, I think, from talking with um, SRO Divine, she estimated about 20% or less of her cases originate off campus. <coughs> but it doesn't mean that she's still not having to do the same type of work she would do if it happened on campus. And I think that's important to know um, regarding her caseload. Uh, because there's a lot that, that, that she wants to do that she should be doing on that school complex that she can't do because she's dealing with all this stuff. Yeah. And for anybody to push back and, and claim that, you know, our data is flawed, you're welcome to come next door. You're welcome to talk with SRO Divine. I don't know that anybody's done that that's pushed back or the administrators at the school. Um, there's all good resources that are relative and pertinent to Wolfboro. We're not talking the national climate. We're talking about safety and security of, our, of a very vulnerable population in our town, which can can be close to 2,000 people on that complex up there on any given school day. 
So, um, as you know, the commission and the department are very passionate about this. We've had some great support from the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Budget Committee, the School Board, and um, but these numbers that we get every month are very important to pay attention to because that's what we're tracking on the trends yeah. and um, that's how we determine you know future needs. So, just a, a question on that. To get feedback from these other agencies where the incidents have occurred as to thanking the officer or any appreciation given to Wolfboro for this? I don't know um, as much because the communication is a lot during, I mean, with Officer Devine and Coco Boucher. Um, but I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. considering the sensitive nature yeah. of this. Yeah. And that I would they think, can start this investigation, yeah. which they would probably not even have without that. Contact. Exactly. Yeah. So. Do you want me to go start on this? No. So, uh, this is uh, Corporal Boucher. Corporal Boucher. So Corporal Boucher worked the month of January as floating SRO between Carpenter and Crescent Lake. He was able to stop by the classrooms, meet with the kids, and continue to meet and introduce himself to the staff at the schools. Um, he continues to assist SRO Divine when needed at the high school, middle school, with questions over the phone. Boucher has daily meetings with SRO Divine prior to heading out of the school. So he really starts up at the high school, meets with her, and then starts his day, because if you look at one of these things, he, he has been sitting near the rear of the Art Center building in the mornings to keep an eye on the students arriving in the morning. Corporal Boucher has been monitoring the area because of complaints about reckless driving speed and parking issues. The complaints on the student drivers have dwindled to zero at this time due to the fact of his presence. And this keeps Officer Devine in the school during that morning hours. So I mean, reckless driving, speeding, a lot of things can come from that. Yeah. Um, when you have all these kids walking into school, and if these kids, kids will be kids, and if they do horse around and lose control of that vehicle, it, it could be bad. So that's a good thing. Uh, Corporal Boucher was in court seven times this month dealing with issues from the extremely busy December. Corporal Boucher was in working with our local JPPO with all the court matters involving the juveniles in our school district, which he's pretty much on the phone with them constantly with all the changes that have come to the state through the JPPO in courts, uh, which I've learned a lot when uh, Prosecutor Tim was, um, Morgan was out for a couple weeks, so in February. Corporal Boucher conducted an evidence return at the police department, which is one of his duties for the department. This will be turned over to Sergeant Sparrow, which was turned over this month. Um, correct? What was that? Uh, to Sergeant Sparrow. It was turned over, so he's going to be the evidence um, so with the detectives. Taking place. Place yeah, with evidence with uh, Detective Emerson, which will allow him to focus more on the schools he is responsible for during the day. Uh, Corporal Boucher has a officially rolled out of the civil response and active shooter response craze training. Um, Corporal Boucher was able to put the training on for the Kingswood High School, middle school. On Monday, January 30th, Corporal Boucher received positive feedback um, directly after the training and then days after as well. I've heard some great things from this training, especially from the teachers. Uh, Corporal Boucher has a busy February ahead of him where you will have several schools within the district lined up for the training. He will travel around to towns to provide this service. So he's basically going around to each individual schools and conducting this training for the um, staff. And I think that's important that all the schools have the same training. And, and like you, I have heard nothing but positive feedback. Yeah. Um, and I have a daughter who's a teacher who doesn't mince words. And she had nothing but high praise uh, for Corporal Boucher, the quality of the training, mm -hmm. and what they got out of it. And, and for him to be able to go around get everybody on the same page that will enable the law enforcement agencies in those communities like we hope to do here, bringing in our police department, the school administrators, and, and trying to develop the best possible plan that yep. we can, you know. Yeah, yeah, doing a wonderful job. Corporal Boucher did have any, didn't have any reportable incidents or crimes within the Carpenter School or Crescent Lake School. Corporal Boucher also assisted, assisted in covering court items for Prosecutor Moore, Morgan and handled juvenile cases at court as well. Corporal Boucher has a few of the cases that will be carried over to the month of January. So I'm assuming into February. Um, while we're on the subject of SROs, can you provide any more detail about the school bus incidents? Are they things happening on the bus or like people passing school buses under red lights or? I don't know exactly what the... Okay. 
um, the incident was. I know Officer Divine had a few of them. That's what I yeah. um, But I can get that information yeah. away. I'm just curious because yeah. I, you know, I just want to make sure that we've kind of quelled the the people passing school Correct. buses when they're yeah. when the stop arms are out and the red lights are flashing. Yeah. I know we followed some buses and our patrol. And we didn't have any incidents. Yeah, we had the uh, midnight officer following some school buses, and um, I think a lot of those issues have been addressed. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, good. Okay. Thank you. Then I can get into the chief's bus. Not all of them. Not all. <laughs> They're cut down. So. Uh, so there will be an end of the year budget, fourth quarter, fiscal year 22 review after the chief's presentation during the March of 2023 police commissioners meeting. This will close the books on the fiscal year 22 budget. We are still waiting on the time for town finance officer's end of year report. Um, as you see, I did a little snapshot of what the budget is after week five. As you see there, we're doing pretty good. Um, don't be alarmed of dispatch. How technically it shows that we're over, but there's a lot of um, annual payments that come out of January. So excuse the percentage up a little. So most of our IMC planet, which is now time, part of the power DMS, those are large bills that come out in January. So for the whole year. So, and what we're seeing every week is the amount of, for the total all three budgets, is it going down? So that's what we want to see. As long as we keep seeing that, that's a good thing. So we're doing really good on that. The only thing that hasn't been taken out is that one day in January. It hasn't been put back, well, it hasn't been taken out of 22 and put into 23 yet. And I think that's about $8,000, $5,000 for police, $3,000 for dispatch. Looks like it's close to nine thousand, actually. Yeah, with the with the amount. Yeah, the police is fifty eight nineteen, yep. and dispatch is three thousand eighty three. So, yeah, that one day happened to be a holiday too. So, it's an expensive day. So, uh, personnel due to illness, Officer Dustin missed a key class of the academy substantially. Substantially, he has been recycled to the one ninety one class starting on twenty seven March at the week five mark. In the meantime, we have him covering shift as he is still part-time <laughs> certified. So that's the good part about it. So he's got to- So he's completely out of the 190th? And he's we'll completely out of the 190th, and he's going to start on the 191 in week five. Okay. Uh, he had some missing classes due to illness. It does happen. But some of those you can't really make up, so oh. they're going to put him back into 191. Okay. So he's got a part-time certification, mm -hmm. so we've just had to apply for an extension on the part-time certification, which they did. Well, I did, it, and then he's all set, so he can cover shifts for. A blessing um, in disguise for me. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, administration, my, um, the chief and myself are continuing to work with the town managers and the rest of the team on the public safety building, which, as uh, you mentioned before, we have an open house after this yes. at five o'clock at the public safety building. Uh, fire um, employees will be there, staff, ourselves. Um, I believe the architect, um, CS, CCI, will be there. Everyone that's within the project will be at the, the building for questions. Plus, we'll have a sketch out there, exhibits and what the building's going to look like. Mm. So, training, Officer Peasley did his SWAT training monthly. Sergeant Strzok did his canine training, monthly training. And Sergeant Sparrow did the evidence training. So, that's what we were talking about. He's going, moving into the evidence room, and he's going to be taking over that from uh, Coco Boucher. Uh, Detective Emerson will assist him with that. We always like two people in there. Uh, dispatch didn't have anything going on in the month of January. Uh, the MCO, Officer Caligandes, continues to respond to calls regarding various animal issues and conducting follow-ups on the cat abuse case. So to give you a little update, I met with her today. Um, and um, so things are progressing good with her. So she's got the photos of all the cats. So our goal with me and her is tr trying to get these cats a good home. Um, because so nobody can take care of 21 cats. Right, and she's agreed to give them up? Uh, we're working on that. So to get that, so, because right now we're still have burdened the cost of it. Yeah. So, but she understands that she can't take care of 21 cats right now. So. So that's a work in progress, more on that next month. Um, 
operations, criminal investigation, and prosecutions. In terms of the police investigation, prosecutions, and operations in the month of January was slow due to the courts and our prosecution, prosecutor being out. We will catch up on the commission next month, which is <coughs> during the February reporting month. Safety and concern matters. January, though busy, was a bit lighter on traffic crashes. We realized a 31.25% decrease in traffic crashes, probably most due to the extreme cold weather and inclement weather where folks remain off the roads, which is good. And I've worked those cold days, and it was extremely cold. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of um, pipes broke in houses, yeah. mm. which was terrible. Some we found that nobody was even there. Their alarm systems triggered it. So we were able to get somebody at the house and shut down the water. So it wasn't as bad as what it could have been. Uh, lastly, during significant weather events, if you do not have to go out, don't. A vast majority of our crashes occur during periods of inclement weather. As you can tell, this was written by the chief. Plans for the needs ahead of these storms, cancel non-important appointments or events if possible. Additionally, please be mindful of the state and town public work crews who are out on the roads during these and just after the storms, cleaning up the snow, slush, and ice. Please give our very talented roads crew the space and time they need to get the roads cleaned up, and please be careful when passing them. Outreach and matters of interest. We are still engaged in a wide variety of public engagements and busy with the Town of Wolfborough Committee programs. And his safety tip of the month for February is traditionally a very cold month, which really has not been, which is really nice, except for those four days or three days. Please take precautions when traveling outside during periods of extreme cold weather and dress appropriately in the layers. And lastly, if you do not have to, if you have too much to drink and can't figure out a safe way to get home, please call the PD. We will figure out something for you so you don't hurt yourself or someone else. Our dispatch number is 603-569-1444. Thank you in advance. And that is all I have. Except for you got the um, yes. gasoline report. Yes. So it looks pretty good. January was two dollars and sixty cents, which is under what um, we budgeted for. So that's pretty good for right now. We only spent one thousand eight hundred thirty dollars for the month of January, and the gallons used was seven hundred and two. So we're under usage and on pay stuff. So that's good. Other than that, I got nothing else. Okay. Um, the next meeting of the Wolfboro Police Commission will be here Thursday in the Bradley Room at the library at our normal start time of 4 p.m. That will be held on March 16th. Um, we do have our representative from the Board of Select, Mr. Luke Freudberg, all cleanly shaven. Um, and anything that uh, you'd like to add? Okay. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your attendance. And Tom Bell from the Budget Committee. Are you on the Budget Committee? No, nothing new, uh, just uh, pleased that uh, we were able to uh, persuade uh, some on the budget committee to uh, accept the SRO position and funding that, so that was a good outcome. Yeah, we are, well, we are grateful. Well done. Thank you got a stern look in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Three papers. Yeah. yeah. All district towns. It's on the uh, Bayside or the uh, Carroll County Independent and here. So I like to. I didn't care so much for the picture, but I'm glad the article hit all three of yeah. yeah. so the district yeah. towns. <laughs> that's just a bonus having my picture on the front. <laughs> no, that's good for a target on a dartboard. Um, okay, and any anything to impart from our general public? Any questions, concerns? Okay. Um, I think, other than that, uh, Commissioner Bryan, do you have anything? The only thing I suggest is if Bernie wanted to attend that uh, special training for the uh, uh, dealing with school safety. Uh, as a member of the CERT team, you are in a position to do so if you found out when it had to be. So if you're interested. I know you've attended stuff in the past. Yeah. Okay. Lieutenant Maloney? Uh, the only thing that I, I was hoping to speak uh, on behalf of was the, um, the, the great job that the uh, officers are are doing and have been doing. Uh, the captain touched base on uh, Detective Emerson um, assisting the ICAC task mm -hmm. force, which is um, extremely important, and he's been doing a, a phenomenal job, um, help taking some 
pretty dangerous people off the streets, um, protecting our most vulnerable, our, our, our children. Um, usually every time he comes back from a, um, an assignment, then I usually get debriefed on it, and it's pretty shocking, some of the stuff that, that's out there. Uh, he was out today assisting, I forget the um, jurisdiction uh, off the top of my head, but um, I haven't got debriefed on that yet, but I'm interested to find out on that. And additionally, um, uh, with Prosecutor Morgan being out, um, there's been a gap with prosecution. Investigator Warren's done a phenomenal job filling in, as has um, Corporal Boucher, so thank them very much. And um, just everybody trying to fill in the, uh, um, the gaps in the schedule. It's been difficult, and um, you know, it takes them away from their families. So oh, family, sure. families are, are, are also uh, very much appreciated, so I just want to get that up there. Thank you. Um, yeah, you just made me think, too, of a point I wanted to make when I was talking about SRO Divine and her workload is that I'm thankful, and I'm sure most people are, that she's developed the relationships she had with the students because even if she's bringing in cases that, out, that uh, occur outside of this jurisdiction, you know, if she wasn't there, where would those, those students go for the relief? You know, it's, we have, you know, students out there that admittedly have, have suffered sexual assault, physical assault, neglect, and had she not been there to talk to, had they not felt comfortable, there would have, would have been potentially any relief. Um, because if you read the papers, if you watch the news or anything, People that are victims like that have a very difficult time reporting what's happening to them, especially young, young adults and, young, and, and younger children. They don't know how to process it, so they don't know what to do with it. Um, so good for her for building those relationships. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because what she's doing is remarkable, but it also increases her workload. But I'd rather have an increased workload um, and, and know what's happening and, and giving these, these students an avenue to report bad things that are happening to them. So. Um, Unfortunately, the increased workload really points to what the number of incidents that are happening actually at the school, and because they come to us, we do get the information on them and then can then act on it as opposed to something just drifting by. Okay. Captain, do you have anything else? That is it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then... Um, at this time, I will entertain a motion to enter into non-public um, for personnel matter. I move that we enter into non-public. Okay. So I have a motion by Commissioner O'Brien to move into non-public under RSA 91A, 91-A uh, for personnel matter. And we will take a roll call vote. Aye. I'm sorry. I seconded that. <laughs> Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. And Commissioner Wood is an aye. Uh, so we'll uh, recess momentarily while we clear the room. Mm -hmm.